This is New York City, 1900, Easter Parade. Um, we used horses for thousands of years as our main means of transportation, we human beings. Um, there is one car in this picture. Can anyone see the one car in that picture? Okay, I don't have all night there. Um, there is one car in New York City, Easter Parade, 1900. 13 years later, can anyone see the horse in that picture? 13 years later, New York City went from all horse, minus one, to all cars. That horse doesn't even look like a horse. This is called a disruption, uh, a technology disruption. So in energy, we have several cost curves for technologies that essentially all of which um, will, as I'm going to show you, enable disruptions of energy and transportation. One of them is lithium ion batteries, uh, which from about, uh, so I'll come back to this. The one important concept is that of technology convergence. So single technologies in and of themselves are not what cause disruptions. Essentially, when you have several technologies that converge, um, at basically, and can enable the, uh, on a cost basis, on a financially uh, viable basis, can enable certain functionalities that were not possible before. So for the smartphone, that year was 2007. That was the year when computing and digital imaging and touchscreen technology and lithium ion batteries and so on made it possible for someone to create a smartphone. Technologies get adopted as an S-curve. So again, when you look at mainstream um, projections, say of EVs or solar and whatnot, you see a linear projection. No technology in history, successful technology in history, right, that I know of, has ever been adopted on a linear basis, ever. It gets adopted as an S-curve. Once you hit that tipping point, essentially, so this is the example of color TV. So essentially it can move sideways for a long time and then when it hits that tipping point, it disrupts the existing market and it gets adopted, it grows exponentially, super exponentially in weeks and months and a few years, meaning that disruptions are happening even more quickly. So if you look at the turn of the 1900s, the S-curves were long, so it would take years, decades, for uh, products to get adopted by the market. And look at it now. It happens in years. So is the EV disruptive? Um, so let me walk you through a couple of things, four things, and, and I have like nine. Um, one is that the internal combustion engine automobile is 17 to 21% efficient. So essentially, 80% of the gasoline in the tank or diesel goes up in smoke, literally, or heat. 80% waste. Um, and the, the electric vehicle is about 95% efficient. So 95% or so of the energy in the battery is actually turned into usable energy. That's five times. Now, that has been the case for a long time. The disruption hasn't happened, but this is disruptive when you combine it with the fact that electrons are cheaper to transmit, to distribute, than atoms, right? So electricity is cheaper than uh, gasoline or diesel. So this is your car, I mean, you don't have a, uh, an electric vehicle. The internal combustion engine automobile has 2,000 plus moving parts, 2,000. The, 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 the ICE vehicle, the EV has 20. Okay, let me repeat that. 2020, that's 100 times fewer parts than the internal combustion engine automobile, 100 times, which means anyone who owns an EV knows it, maintenance is essentially, you know, let's say 10x cheaper, right? Not to say free, uh, because a lot of EV companies are offering free maintenance. Why? Because they can. Uh, <laughs> Because, you know, basically, when you look at folks, and I've talked to a lot of them who have used their EVs for hundreds of thousands of miles, they tell me that their biggest cost is basically tires. 